What's the motherfucking tea, everybody? All of y'all out there have been asking me to do my first YouTube video. Y'all know I'm a professional procrastinator before I'm a professional drag queen, okay? But the time has come. It's officially here. I took a few weeks off after I finally got home from Work the World. I have not been in Houston, Texas for five months away from my family, my friends, my mental health. Thank God it was never there because, baby, it has deteriorated to the maximum capacity. In that time, I got to film with Trixie Mattel and Patrick Starr. Y'all love all the makeup content, so I, of course, had to come. The first video had to be a get ready with me. I'm going to warn y'all right now, my makeup, absolutely disgusting. Brushes torn up, sponges dirty, and I'm not going to wash it. I'm going to be real with you. I've been feeling my masculine just lately, but it's time to become a beautiful, feminine woman. So let's transform into the monster known as Mistress Isabel Brooks. Act the fool and let's cut the up. I'm back. I'm fully shaved. I did my skincare. I got my skin prepped for makeup. And let me just say this. After being on tour for five months and being in drag almost every day, my skin has some patches where it was rejecting makeup. My foundation would not stick sometimes. And when it's 30 minutes before show and one little patch of skin is crusty and falling off, that is the fool. So for me, I have a really intense skincare routine I'm doing right now and it seems to be working. As you can see, my skin looks really refreshed and really moisturized. And that's something I really focus on before I get into drag is hydrating my skin because all the scrubbing and pulling and makeup and wiping off really takes its toll. So if you want to see my skincare routine and y'all are interested in something like that, leave a comment and let me know. And before we get started, y'all know my first YouTube video, you better like, comment, and share. If you're if you're eating up the content, baby, you already know what it gives. Y'all be watching on my lives, y'all be watching this and that. This is not the first get ready with me, it's just the first one on YouTube documented. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Do your thing. Enough talking, let's jump right into it. For all the girls, let me give you a disclaimer. Today, I'm gonna use some products that are not meant for the skin. Today, I'm gonna use some products that are not makeup products. I'm gonna use some things that y'all gonna be like, girl, what? Stick with me, I'm giving you the real routine, the, the, real, the real blueprint to the mistress mug. These brushes, unwashed. Beauty blenders, probably moldy, disgusting, nasty, rotted, yuck. I'ma still put it on my face. I'ma still look sickening. And I'm, it, it would just be untrue if I washed everything and that's just not me. But with that being said, the first product I use that is not a makeup product, this Monistat Chafing Cream is one of my secret weapons. I cannot get into drag without this. It's really comparable to like the Smashbox Photo Finish, except this is like $5. And if you don't have $5, it's free if you steal it. Secret Texas makeup tip. If you glue down your eyebrows, Avoid those areas because this shit will probably make it come up like nothing. And you know half you bitches already have oatmeal brow. I use four different Krylon TV paint sticks. I use my base, I have a contour color, I have my regular highlight color, and I have a pure white stick. Now that my forehead is based out, I'm gonna go in with my highlight right in the middle, and I'm gonna do a little bit of contouring, set all that down, and then we'll be ready to move on to my eyebrows. Now I'm gonna go in right with my contour stick and I'm gonna just dot it. I'm not gonna do a really thick, heavy line because when it comes to makeup, especially the cream foundations with the color this dark, it's so much easier to add on than it is to take away. So go a little light-handed at first, as light-handed as drag makeup can get, and then we'll go ahead and blend it all out and it'll be real cute. I am not Bill Nye the Science Guy. I am not Miss Frizzle. I'm not a scientist, biologist. I don't know Pythagorean theorem, but what I do know is this neutral set works for me. But I think they do say that Ben Nye neutral set can like cause cancer because the talk in it or like gives you clown lung. I don't know, girl. In my opinion, there's so many things that can kill you these days. Um, if I die because of neutral set, it is what it is. Actually, Mother Kimchi, I know you're watching this, you fat bitch. She didn't put me on the PR list. She wanted to give me stuff in real life when I was like, oh, I love the Puff Puff Pass Powder. It's so sickening. Girl, she was like, oh, go buy it. So when I go to CVS, Walgreens, wherever she's at, and I start selling every Puff Puff Pass Powder, don't be surprised, bitch. The time has come for me to reveal the most asked question I get about my makeup. Everyone always asks me, how do I get my eyebrows to look like this? As you can see, I'm going from zero to 100, baby, from rags to ridges. I am making eyebrows out of thin air. The secret is, you have to get the stick on eyebrow tattoos. You know when you were a little kid and you were eating at a restaurant with your family and there was like a little quarter machine? It's basically the same tea. So you get the eyebrows, you cut them out. It's very arts and crafts, girl. But trust me, it's the perfect base. It looks so beautiful, it looks so HD, as long as you lay them down correctly. For my makeup look, I have a bunch of eye space. It's gonna be giving McDonald's Golden Arches Divine Drag Queen. That's exactly what we're going for. So it's gonna look crazy. Stick with me, trust the process. Well, that's that's how you do your brows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
That ever is how high they work. We have the brow on. As you can see, the texture of the towel kind of messes with your foundation. It's gonna look a mess, and then I go back and fix it and clean it up. For now, now that my brows are on my face, I take the same powder puff we set our foundation with. Don't add any extra powder. We're just gonna use what's on the puff, and we're gonna really press in take away the shine and really set them down and make sure they're cured to our face. So now for my brow products, I used to use like the Anastasia brow pomade, which is really good. However, I feel like with the tattoo brows, heavy products like that kind of pull at them and can make them crack or pull up. So I switched to using brow pins. They're kind of like a liquid eyeliner, but for your eyebrows. And I used two of them. The first one I ever found was the MAC Shape and Shade like brow tint. It's beautiful. I use it for the base of it. However, I feel like the shade range is not everything that it could be. And that's where the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow pin comes in. The Anastasia brow pin is fucking sickening. They have a bunch of shades. Um, I'm not sure how much they cost because I stole all these from the set of Drag Race, but I used three of them. I used dark brown, I used ebony, and granite. I don't even want to hear anything about symmetry because y'all be letting Trixie Mattel nose go like, Urgh! So bitch, we're gonna forgive the brows, we're gonna move on. I probably have a lazy eye like Kennedy Davenport, it's probably swirling and twirling in the mirror. I'm gonna start off with the MAC brow pin, we're gonna shape it out, and I'm gonna even it as much as possible. Now that my brows are the shape and shade I want them to be, I'm gonna now go in and we're gonna start the base for my eyeshadow and clean up my brows all in one swipe. I like to use like a flat eyeliner kind of brush. Synthetic bristles are usually good for cream products, so that's what I stick to. You kind of want to be as thin as possible with it. You don't want to make it super thick because we're gonna be putting our eyeshadows over it and it's gonna be hard to set it if it's super thick, so try to keep it as thin as possible but obviously as opaque as you need it to be. Now that I laid the base down and cleaned up my brows, I'm gonna take it on this flat brush and go right above my eyebrows and make them as symmetrical as possible and as sharp as I need them to be. Now that my eyebrows are cleaned up and all the base for that eyeshadow is blended out, it's time to go in and start mapping out my crease. I don't use eyeshadow palettes. I actually have a TikTok up where I show you the palette I've been using, but I use a, a customized Z palette. If you haven't tried Sugar Pill eyeshadows, Sugar Pill Cosmetics is the OG. I remember back in the day when I first started drag, you couldn't really find colorful eyeshadows eyeshadows except for like matte cosmetics sugar pill eyeshadow the brightest white the darkest black that is a secret people ask me all the time how do i get my eyes so white start off with my eye makeup i go in first with a little eyeshadow brush with some black and i start shaping and mapping out how big and how round i want my crease to be this eyeshadow brush is from the naked free palette i've had this brush for years i cannot get ready i cannot do my eyeshadow without this very brush now, while I'm getting ready, I do have to give a shout out to Trixie Mattel. She kind of inspired me to make my first YouTube video, a makeup get ready with me video, because when I filmed with her, Trixie would not stop talking about how she loves my makeup and she feels like my makeup is one of her favorites in the Drag Race franchise, which really means a lot to me and it warmed my cold, nasty, Grinch-like heart. Filming with Trixie was definitely one of the highlights of my 2023. This year was so amazing, I really can't complain. I got to travel all over the world, work the world. I got to collaborate with so many beautiful people and so many brands I love. And I feel like, honestly, it's just a start. I feel like I, I can visualize where I wanna be and where I see my career going and how I wanna grow my social presence. And honestly, the best part of this year Y'all made it so worth it getting to meet every one of y'all, getting to interact with y'all. Y'all know that's why I love going on live. And even when I'm on TikTok talking about, please send a galaxy, baby, I'm here to entertain you guys just like I am here. So hopefully YouTube will be my new kind of place where I can come and create really high quality content for you guys. Y'all know my mind goes a million hours a minute and I have so many ideas and I'm so excited to be starting this venture. So if you're to this point already, you've been watching the video this far, you obviously like what you see. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Baby, subscribing is free. This is not TikTok. You don't need to send me no galaxies. This is not a show. You don't have to pay to come see me. Subscribing, commenting, share it with your friends, share it with the bitch you know don't like me. All that is free. Now that I laid out my black down, my signature eye makeup, I kind of go for like a very sunset, warm, yellow, orange, and red. Now that I have all that yellow and kind of light orange laid down, I'm gonna go in with a darker orange, and you can see how I lay it all down, blend it all together. But we have our lightest shade now. We're gonna go in with a dark orange, and then the red right on top of it. Now that everything's laid down, my black is black, my red is chef's kiss and everything's blended together. I know it looks a little rough in some patches, but that's why we go back and clean everything up. So we're gonna move on to the next step, which is cleaning up my crease and making it super brown, super precise. If you're one of the girls who've been asking, how do you get your eyelids so white? I'm gonna give you the secret recipe. After you've laid all this down, the first and most important step is to start with a very clean base. So I'm gonna take some makeup wipes and I'm gonna remove all the excess makeup where my lid is gonna be and that's gonna give us that beautiful pure white. I'm not really married to a certain product when it comes to the cream base I'm gonna use for my white. All that matters is that it's a white cream. You can use Bed Night Clown White, you could use Mayron Clown White, 
uh, P. Louise is what I've been using lately. I'm gonna go in with some white cream and then we're gonna set it down with that white sugar pill eyeshadow and that's gonna be the perfect ingredients to make the most beautiful, intense white eyelid. Now that I have my eyes set and I have everything laid down, we're gonna finish off my eye and I have a really thick black liner and I use the same liner to clean up all the edge of it and that's what's gonna make that black on my eye and in my crease look so, so intense. Now, while I'm filling in my eyelid, like I said earlier, I'm gonna take the same black liner with this brush and I'm gonna bring it all the way back and re-intensify and clean up all that black. Now that I have my eyeliner done, it's not set yet, but I'm gonna take that same gel liner and I'm gonna use that to clean up my lid and make it as small and symmetrical as I need it to be. Like I said earlier, when we first hit on the white cream, you wanna lay a little bit more than what you need, that way we can go in and make it super crisp and sharp. Now I'm gonna go in with that same sugar pill black eyeshadow. I'm gonna set all that black I just laid down and I'm gonna take a small little brush and blend out that black right above my crease. Okay, now I can finally take a deep breath. <sighs> the eyes are done. That's what takes the most time with my makeup routine. Before my foundation, I like to hydrate my face one more time, which is a great makeup tip I learned from when I was a makeup artist at MAC Cosmetics. So I'm gonna take some Fix Plus, hydrate my skin, go right over that with the Monistat Primer again, and then we're gonna lay down my foundation. The craziest ones to get ready with on Work the World was definitely like Naomi Smalls and Miss Banji. They're so particular about everything. They like to have everything loaded out. They have everything in the spot it needs to be. Every single brush is in order of the way they're gonna use it. It's all cleaned off. Like, they're how it should be getting ready. Like, if I were to have like that princess moment where everything's perfect, it would be Naomi Smalls makeup station. I just accepted the fact that I'm always gonna be a tornado. It's always gonna be like I ran through it and that's just how life has to be. So now that I laid my base down, I'm gonna go in and I contour my nose a little bit different. So I'm gonna go in with my 1W Krylon TV paint stick, put it all over my cheeks and all over my nose. Also, while you're laying down this foundation, don't worry if you get a little bit on the eyeliner, we're gonna go in one last time and of course clean it up and darken it up. Now that I have all my highlight blended out, I'm gonna go in and blend all over my nose, get a little bit of this right between my eyeshadow, and then I'm gonna contour my nose. I want my nose to be like, girl, can you breathe? I want it to be like, snatched. I don't know what it is, but I feel like once I have my nose contoured, that's when mystery starts coming out. That's when I'm like, okay, I, I see what it's giving. Now what I've been doing lately is I've been using kind of like a cream blush to contour my cheeks. I like the way it looks. I think when I, it makes it much easier to contour and deepen your cheek. So I'm gonna go in with this P. Louise Cream Eyeshadow Base and I'm gonna use that to contour my cheeks. And this product is very, very pigmented. We're gonna lightly dab her on lightly in drag terms. I'm not trying to look like Candy Mew, so I'm gonna really try to blend her out. Also, if you're not that good at blending just yet, I do find it easier to do your foundation with cream because if something's too pigmented, you can add on more cream on top of it and blend it out and take it away. Also, shout out to my sister Luscious Massacre. She was kind of the one who got me into the cream blush because she was doing it a lot on herself and on Shangela when she was painting her for We're Here and I thought it looked so beautiful. Maybe I should collab with Luscious. Maybe we should paint each other. That would be kind of sickening. So now that my blush is on, that's not all the contour we're gonna do. This is just the base we're laying down so it could be pigmented. I'm gonna go in with that Krylon 070 Pure White Stick and we're gonna put that right under my eye and blend her out. So what I like to do is I get my neutral set and I get my powder puff and I have it already loaded up. That way, as soon as I'm done blending her out, I can go ahead and set her in so the wrinkles don't set in. People always ask me like, where did I get my makeup inspiration from? And like, what's the tea? And for me, I feel like Drag makeup is always changing and things are always trendy, but I've never been one to keep up with drag makeup trends. Like, I feel like my makeup and the basis of what I do and what I'm trying to accomplish has honestly always remained the same throughout my drag career. I feel like I'm obviously, like, every bit of my drag, I'm sure y'all already know what I'm about to say, every bit of my drag is inspired by Texas drag. And what I mean by that, of course you're inspired by where you're from, but Texas drag is such a beast on its own. And I hate to use the word, like, Texas pageantry drag or drag is pageant and glamour. That's not necessarily what I mean when I say that. It's like a generational thing that's been carried on through all the drag queens. So like everyone kind of does the same thing and has the same basis, which is good and bad. But I'm super inspired by old school Texas drag where I want to have the white cheeks that look so puss. I want the baby back in the day, I used to take a little bit of black eyeshadow deep in my cheek with some black. We want to be painted. My style of drag is not often done these days. And that's what I love and that's why I'm so blessed and so honored because I think me sharing these videos and sharing my tips and making posts and doing lives, it encourages the next generation to follow in the same footsteps I did. And honestly, that's been the best part of being on the Drag Race journey. But you know who I think in the Drag Race stratosphere never gets enough credit for their makeup? I think Bianca Del Rio, even though she is like fucking Pennywise, 
she is still painted. Bianca Del Rio looks fucking sickening. And I feel like the girls don't talk about it enough. Now that everything's set and I'm going in and powdering down my face, this is what I'm gonna say. Literally, this is when beat your mug comes into play. So you need to literally take that powder on the powder puff and beat it in because we want that to set and be done and we don't have to worry about it the entire night, okay? So now that I have all this white powder on me, instead of just dusting it off, I'm literally gonna go in one more time with nothing on my powder puff and I'm gonna really press all that powder in one more round just to make sure everything's super set. Now the hard part of our makeup is done, all the base is laid down. I'm gonna go in, highlight and contour my face with some powders, and I'm gonna show you how I reinforce everything to make it very vivid, very beautiful, very blended, but most of all, opaque. For this, I am a true matte girly. I used to be a professional makeup artist at MAC Cosmetics, and I use the term professionally very loosely. Because baby, when I used to be painting the girls at the matte counter, I did not want to be there. Like, I it literally, that's why I had to stop working there because I feel like so many people aspire to be makeup artists and so many people especially wanted to work at MAC because I feel like back in the day, MAC was that girl. And MAC is still that girl. MAC is one of the brands that you know is going to always just have the things that work and it's going to be something that... It might not be the best in every aspect, but she's reliable. But baby, I'm not made for retail. MAC, love the job, love the girls I work with for the most part, but... I'm not meant to be in retail, girl. I will be reading the customers right back when they got snappy. <laughs> the fool. If y'all want to hear more about that, let me know. Maybe I'll come and tell some stories about my very, very short-lived days of retail. I'm going to go in with the Studio Fix Powders, which is basically a powder foundation. So on top of all that thick, heavy cream we laid down, we're going to go in with powder foundation. So, girl, it's going to be dragged out. I do have to give a shout out to my sister, Patrick Starr. As you know, I was the first girl to ever get the stage white powder from one size. I cannot get it to drag without this powder. I use this to touch up my eyes, to do my brow bone, to highlight my cheeks, to do the middle of my lip if I want it to be a little bit brighter. The stage white one size powder is so versatile. As you can see, she is very well loved. I've taken her everywhere with me around the world since I got it. Still not at pan. Baby. If you're a drag queen, if you're a makeup lover, if you like to do creative things, even if you're an everyday makeup wearer, you can find a use for the stage white powder brightening so versatile, one of the best. Cluck that tea. Now, just like everything I said earlier, we're first laying everything down so it can be pigmented, and then I have a method to blending everything out. So if it looks a little bit harsh, don't worry, we're gonna go in and blend everything out. We're just setting all that powders where they need to be. And like I said earlier, talking about the Naked 3 brush I need to get ready, baby. Here is one in mint condition. She still has a dual in, but I use this side to contour my nose. I don't use blush anymore because when I travel, I like to keep my makeup bag as condensed as possible. So I'm gonna use some of the eyeshadows from that palette I have, my little customized Z palette, and I'm gonna use those to warm up my face and contour my cheeks and add blush on top of that cream blush I already did. Now I'm gonna take my one size powder and I'm gonna show you how I like to use it. So I like to have a very highlighted and white cheek and highlighting and contouring is all about drawing focus to where you want in drag so I want right under my eye to be the most vivid part and the most piercing so I'm gonna take this one size stage white powder and I'm gonna take like a little fluffy brush and I'm gonna really focus it right under my eyes and the reason I'm not using a powder puff like I did for the rest of the powders this white is so pigmented it would look so crazy and unblended if I just went in and I'm sure you can see the difference one size and just my regular highlight so now that all my powders are done i'm going to take a fluffy brush start bleeding them all out and just dusting off all the excess powder that way i can move on finish my eyes put on my lashes and lips and then we'll be ready to fully transform one of my favorite compliments i've gotten while on the road i love especially when other drag race queens say it i love when the girls give me my flowers I love when everyone's like, your makeup is fucking incredible. You look exactly like you did on TV or exactly like your pictures. And it's crazy because I feel like that's how it should be. The artistry of drag, all of y'all be using Facetune and Photoshop, and yeah, we all do it. But you gotta match, you know what I mean? You gotta look like your pictures. You gotta look like what they're expecting. That's the beauty of drag. And that's when you know you're that girl. So now that I'm done highlighting and contouring my face, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take that same white cream I used earlier, put that all under my eye, and then I'm gonna show you how I go in and smoke out the bottom and prepare my eye for my bottom lash. Now, if I'm gonna wear some big bottom lashes like I am now, I don't really worry too much about blending out the bottom of my eye. But if I'm not wearing bottom lashes or I'm doing a smoky eye, I'll really take my time to blend it out. Today, she's gonna be very pigmented and very black. Now that that white set under my eye, and I know it looks a little bit crazy, but stick with me. I'm gonna go in with the black liquid liner, we're gonna go right under it, and that's gonna make it super pigmented, super black, 
It's gonna give us like a little cat eye feel. Now that I have that black laid down, I'm gonna take the same liquid liner and drag that all the way back just to clean up that line one more time. Now that my eyes are done, everything's blended and laid how I want it to be. All the bases of my makeup is pretty much done. Now it's time to just do my lashes and lips. I'm gonna be drawing some birds, okay? Baby, let me tell you the magic secret. You're gonna get you a lip liner and you're gonna draw some birds right on top of your lip, just like when you were in pre-K kindergarten drawing birds in the sky. Make your lips very full and juicy. That's, that's the mistress look. Now that I've outlined my lips and got the shape how I want it to be, it doesn't have to be super crisp. We're gonna go in and clean that up with our liquid lipstick. The same method we did on our lid, we're gonna do for our lipstick because the more buildup you have, the less pigmented it'll be. It's gonna mix together with the color of your foundation and it kind of messes with the formula of the lipstick. So I'm gonna take a makeup wipe, remove all the makeup I have under where I'm gonna place my lipstick and then I'm gonna go in and top it off with my favorite liquid lipstick. Lately I've been using the Anastasia liquid lips and that works perfect for me. So I'm gonna go in with a few shades, a few different colors, a darker color around the perimeter and lighten it up right in the middle and do my signature red lip. Now that my lips are done, I'm gonna throw on my lashes, of course using the drag queen staple, some weave bonding glue. If you're a regular schmegular mega makeup wearer, use some duo or some other eyelash glue but me i don't care i'm ready to go blind i'm ready to risk it all if i have to have two glass eyeballs and i'm blind that will be the consequences now that my lashes are done i'm gonna do some last minute little tidbits and i'll be back with the full transformation uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Bitch, I know I am feeling puss whenever I start, whenever I turn on that voice, honey. That's that's the voice of drag, girl. Get into the mug. You can't even. I can't even lie. Look, I wanted to come on here, and I was in my congenial era. I was feeling very angelic, and here I am, the same conceited, narcissistic bitch. And I can't help it. I'm not even gonna apologize. I look stunning. I am that girl. When you have a hand beaded couture costume, this is what the beads swishing sound like. Listen, take a. Look. We're gonna do a little ASMR. That's money, bitch. That's glamour. I'm sorry. I don't want y'all to copy me, but if y'all do, I, I understand. I understand you would want to like emulate and replicate perfection. And the thing is, clock that T. When I'm wearing blonde hair, it's over for you girls. I'm sorry. That's just drag rules. You know what I mean? When a bitch is wearing a style sickening nasty blonde piece, she, she rules the world, I'm sorry. Listen, I hope y'all have enjoyed this Get Ready With Me. Everyone has always asked me for makeup tips and tricks and how do I get my white so white and how do I do this and that and this and that. Listen, I'm making baby steps. Like I said earlier, I am the queen of gatekeeping. I am the queen of being a greedy bitch. I'm changing my ways. 2024 is coming. I'm trying to be, you know, a more giving, congenial, angelic person. And if this year has taught me anything, it's that I possess all those qualities. So I had to come and do my first video as to get ready with me. I'm finally back home from being on Work the World Tour. It's been an amazing summer. It's been an amazing year. Listen, let me stop acting a fool. Thank you so much to all of y'all tuning in for my first YouTube video, Get Ready With Me. If you've made it this far into the video, I wanna start off by saying thank you so much for always showing your support. You better click that subscribe button because I'm going to try to force myself to get on a weekly upload schedule. I'm gonna try my absolute hardest and listen, nothing is gonna motivate me more to bring my next video than y'all subscribing, leaving a comment. Even if it's a hate comment, if you wanna be like, you nasty fat bitch, you wanna be Trixie, you'll never be Trixie, you'll never be Eureka. I get it, look, I've never left those comments. I don't really know much about that, but if that's what makes y'all happy, that's what makes you like do your thing, just do it, honestly. Y'all can use my comment section as a diary if I really wanted to. With that being said, drop a comment below and let me know what kind of content you want to see next. Baby, we're here to entertain and act a damn fool. Do y'all want me to do more makeup tutorials? Do you want me to do some wig styling videos, some story time, the dating show? Y'all know I'm here for the shits and giggles. I'm here to entertain you guys. And the possibilities are endless. I think the time has come for me to go cut up and act a complete fool. And I encourage each and every one of you out there to do the same exact thing. We're gonna take a moment of silence. We're gonna manifest the chaotic energy. You know, everyone's always ending their videos like, oh my God, I want all of y'all to have a good day. Baby, it's 2024. We need someone to shake it up. I want all of y'all out there to be chaotic. We're gonna be unhinged. We're gonna act a damn fool. Baby, we are going into 2024 and we're gonna have a good time. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.